ओके वेलकम गाइस टुडे वी विल शेल बी स्टार्टिंग विद द टॉपिक ऑफ प्रोटीन नाउ व्हाट इज प्रोटीन इज इफ आई जस्ट गिव यू अ ब्रीफ डेफिनेशन ऑफ प्रोटीन इन सिंपल वे व्हाट वी कैन से इज प्रोटीन इज अ पॉलीमर ऑफ अमीनो एसिड मींस मल्टीपल अमीनो एसिड विल हेल्ड टुगेदर एंड विल मेक प्रोटीन दिस इज द सिंपलेस्ट डेफिनेशन दैट वी कैन गे दैट वी कैन गिव फॉर प्रोटीन सो आई कैन से से फॉर एग्जांपल दीस मॉलिक्यूल्स आर रेफरिंग अमीनो एसिड दीस आर द अमीनो एसिड these amino acid will be held together with the help of peptide bond then this polymer which we have made of uh, these amino acid this will be referred as protein so i can say that this is the peptide bond peptide bond is a covalent bond and it is a very strong bond peptide is a very strong bond so what i can say is the definition of protein is this is a polymer of polymer of amino acid held together by held together by peptide bond this is the simplest structure of a protein can be that there is only only one type of bond that is there is the peptide bond right that is called as the uh, the protein now uh, when we study the protein when we study the protein in the biological environment means inside the cell when we will discuss the protein what is the function how they are formed this entire study of the protein inside the biological environment is referred as proteomics so what is proteomics is proteomics is the study of protein structure and function structure and function inside the biological environment inside biological environment that is referred as proteomics now once we are clear with this definition of protein and proteomics now let's see uh, we know that a cell is continuously producing different different types of protein say for example let's say this is a cell and it is producing different different types of protein and making with different different uh, uh, shapes for example this is the protein a protein b c and so on we can have different different types of protein a cell continuously producing different different types of protein so how uh, these proteins will be differentiated from one another there is a organelle that is with the name of golgi body what golgi body will do is golgi body will make vesicles and in these vesicles these different different proteins will be packed in different different vesicles so i can say this is a sorting of protein this is a kind of sorting of protein that is occurring and they ask that this uh, sorting of protein occurs with the help of which organelle the answer will be golgi body so uh, let's write down the statement that sorting of protein sorting of protein is done by golgi body sorting of protein is done by golgi body this is one thing once we are clear with this uh, structure once we are clear with the basic definition of protein now we'll see the classification of protein so so now we'll start with the classification of protein whenever we want to classify anything first we need to understand that on what ground on what basis we are doing this classification so the first classification that we are going to discuss of the protein is based on based on nutritional value based on the nutritional value of the protein based on the nutritional value now what is the meaning of nutritional value see we know that uh, we have total 22 types of amino acid out of 22 we have nine essential amino acid so they, these nine essential amino acid has to be taken in the diet right because the body cannot synthesize them endogenously so what i can say is that uh, based on nutritional value i can say that there are some protein source which contain all the nine essential amino acid if there is any protein source which contain all the nine essential amino acid that is called as complete protein complete protein in a sense that if you are eating that particular protein source there is no other requirement to eat any other other protein source because that will satisfy all the essential amino acid you are taking the rest of the the amino acid will be made by the body itself so i can say what is complete protein is basically contains all essential amino acid contain all essential amino acid and the example of such complete protein is casein casein is the protein that is found in milk casein protein of milk so if we are taking casein 
in our diet then uh, the all the essential amino acid we are taking primarily and from that the other non essential semi essential will be synthesized so this is the complete protein complete protein is also referred as first class protein is also referred as first class protein then the the second classification the second sub category is that is called as incomplete protein incomplete protein now what is incomplete protein is basically if you are taking a protein source which lack one essential amino acid if there is only eight essentials are present and one essential is missing because total nine essentials we have nine essential amino acid out of that only eight are present one is missing such protein source are labeled as incomplete protein so incomplete protein means contains a uh, eight essential amino acid or i can say lacks one essential amino acid lacks one essential amino acid the example is pulses pulses are deficit of methionine pulses are deficit of methionine methionine is essential amino acid in the same way we can add uh, cereals cereals are deficit of lysine so pulses methionine cereals lysine so they are deficit of one particular essential amino acid so they are the incomplete protein sources now there is one more category and that is referred as the poor protein poor protein poor protein means more than one essential is missing means two or more than two essentials are missing two or more than two essential amino acid are missing if two or more than two essential amino acid are missing that is called as poor protein the example is the example is the zein protein zein protein found in corn so this zein protein which is found in corn it is particularly deficit of is deficit of is having deficiency of lysine and tryptophan lysine and tryptophan is deficit of lysine and tryptophan to summarize i can say that there are three categories of protein we have complete incomplete and poor complete means all the nine essentials are there incomplete means one essential is missing and poor means there is more than one essential means maybe two or maybe more than two they are missing so this is the first classification that is based on the nutritional requirement or, or the nutritional value let's see the second classification of the protein that is basically based on the structure of the protein based on structure of protein now when we classify the protein based on the structure the sub categories you may be aware of that the sub categories based on the structure they are the primary structure the secondary structure the tertiary structure and the quaternary structure so we are going to discuss them in detail what is primary what is secondary and so on so let's starting with the first one that is the primary structure of the protein primary structure of the protein so to understand these primary secondary tertiary quaternary first we'll make the structures and from that structure we'll try to derive the definition so primary structure of protein when it comes to the primary structure of protein what we are going to notice that in the primary structure of protein there are amino acid say for example these are the amino acid <coughs> this is a polymer of amino acid we are making and the only bond which is going to be there in between the only bond which is going to be there in between is the peptide bond there is no other bond than the peptide bond so i can say here is your the peptide bond and these are the amino acids so basically there is a chain of amino acid which is held together by peptide bond and that is called as the primary structure this is the simplest structure possible there is no other than peptide bond there is no bond other than peptide so primary structure is is basically a polymer of amino acid or a chain of amino acid held together by peptide bond held together by peptide bond now the point to be remembered is that the peptide bond is a covalent bond and the covalent bond this peptide is very strong bond is a very strong bond so peptide bond is a strong bond and hence we can say because it is a strong bond so hence we can say that the primary structure 
is going to be the strongest structure among all these four primary secondary tertiary quaternary if they ask which is the strongest one the strongest one is the primary because it contains only the strong bond that is the peptide bond now coming to the secondary structure <coughs> secondary structure let's first understand the definition of the secondary structure to understand the definition again i am drawing a diagram from the diagram we'll try to derive the definition part so for example let's say this is the amino acid the amino acid so i have made a chain of amino acid and this chain of amino acid again the bond that is going to be there in between is the peptide bond so i have made a chain of amino acid and there is a peptide bond in between so till now it is more or less like the primary structure now what i do is these are the amino acids so if i give just numbers to make it more clear amino acid number 1 2 3 4 5 6 and so on so what i do is i make a non peptide relationship i made a non peptide relationship between the amino acid which are in the linear sequence means for example the amino acid number 2 amino acid number 2 and the amino acid number 6 they are in the linear sequence they are linear sequence they are three amino acid apart from one another now what i do is i make a non peptide bond in between these two amino acid non peptide bond then again i make a non peptide bond between let's say from the amino acid number 5 and 10 again they are in the linear sequence three four amino acid apart so is making a non peptide bond in between so if we make the non peptide relationship in between the amino acid which are in the linear sequence like this then this relationship uh, this structure is going to be referred as the secondary structure so this green color bond which i have made is the non peptide bond in the primary structure there is only one type of bond that was there was the peptide bond in the secondary structure we have the peptide as well as the non peptide bond so the secondary structure i can say is if i derive the definition from the uh from the diagram if we derive the definition what i can say is there is non peptide relationship between the amino acid which are in linear sequence 3 4 amino acid apart we are making a non peptide relationship between the amino acid which are uh, in the linear sequence three four amino acid apart now when i am saying it is non peptide bond so which type of non peptide bond which type of or what are the examples of non peptide bond we have so let's write down the examples of the non peptide bond or the non peptide relationship the non peptide bond the most commonly the non peptide bond that we are going to see is the hydrogen bond the hydrogen bond then other than hydrogen bond it can be such as the van der waal bond it can be electrostatic bond it can be hydrophobic bond so the point is that it should be it should not be a peptide bond it should be other than peptide bond it should be other than peptide bond that has to be there in a second structure now once this uh, the basic diagram is clear that how the secondary structure is made how we are going to make the non peptide relationship now we'll see the the sub types of the peptide bond now we are going to see the sub types of the secondary structure the sub types of secondary structure when it comes to the sub type of the secondary structure what we can say is the sub types are alpha helix beta pleated sheet turn and bands loops so these are the types of secondary structure that we have alpha helix beta pleated sheet turn band and loop so let's discuss them one by one first of all we'll start with the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet so we'll try to make a differentiating table in between we'll try to make a differentiating table in between the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet 
alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet now let's first make the structure of the alpha helix in the alpha helix we are going to have the chain of amino acid in a helical shape manner there is only one chain and the bond firstly we are making the peptide bond and in this single chain now we are going to make the non peptide relationship also so let's say these are the non peptide bonds so these are the non peptide bonds the green color ones are the non peptide bonds when it comes to the beta pleated sheet there will be more than one chain of amino acid so for example this is the first chain this uh, this is the second chain so basically there will be more than one chain and between the amino acid the first is going to be the peptide bond so this is the first polypeptide chain this is the second polypeptide chain and now we are going to make the non peptide relationship so for example let's say so now we are going to make the non peptide bonds say for example let's say these are the non peptide bonds in between the chains so what you can see is in the alpha helix there is only one chain that is there and it is looking like a helical shape structure whereas in the beta pleated sheet there is more than one chain and if you see the structure it is looking like this like a zigzag pattern so if we make the difference between these two types of secondary structure the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet the first difference that we can figure out is that the alpha helix is having a helical shape whereas the beta pleated sheet it is having the zigzag pattern the second thing is that is the one of the most critical point that you need to understand in the alpha helix there is only one chain that we are having and inside the chain we are making the bond right whereas in the beta pleated sheet there is more than one chain and in that we are making the bond so if you are making the bond inside a single chain that is called as intra chain linkage that is the intra chain linkage whereas in the second one it is the inter chain linkage in the beta pleated sheet we have the inter chain linkage there is more than one chain and we are making the bonds now let's see the third difference what is the third difference is if i ask you that which is which one seems to be more stable right the more stable structure is not the beta pleated sheet it is the alpha helix now why it is so because the non peptide relationship that is there the non peptide relationship is not a strong bond the green color bond which you can see in the diagram they are not the strong bond they are not the strong bond so if you just give a slight pressure on the beta pleated sheet see this is the first chain let's say this is the second chain and the bond that is there in between is the the non peptide relationship so if i represent the non peptide relationship via this pen this is the first chain of amino acid then the non peptide and this is the second one and this bond is not stable if you give a slight pressure the bond will disrupt and these chains will slip on one another whereas in the alpha helix there is only one chain and in that you are making that bond so despite it will rupture or not rupture the structure will more or less will remain the same right so i can say that alpha helix is more stable the beta pleated sheet is less stable if it is more stable then i can say it will be more commonly found in the body because it will live long whereas beta pleated sheet is less common when it comes to the example of the protein which is found in alpha helix it is the the protein of the rbc that is the hemoglobin or i can say the myoglobin the protein part that is the globin that is found in the alpha helix where is the example of the beta pleated sheet is carbonic anhydrase whereas the example of beta pleated sheet is carbonic anhydrase carbonic anhydrase so these are the difference between the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet now we'll see the the third and the fourth subtype of the secondary structure that is turn and bend and the loops so again we'll make a differentiating table between these two turn bend and the loop so what are the difference between turn bend and loop and what what is the basic concept behind them so to understand this let's understand first the turn and bend then we'll go to the loop side for example just now we have discussed that the hemoglobin 
the protein part of the hemoglobin that is the globin part basically it is found in the alpha helix form right so i can say let's say this is the one of the globin chain that we are having that is in the alpha helix alpha helix means the secondary structure alpha helix means the secondary structure so i have taken a protein which is in the secondary structure alpha helix form taking one more hemoglobin molecule again this globin part is going to have the alpha helix form and that is going to be the second structure that is going to be the second structure so that is again let's say this is one more protein that is in the second structure now i want to join these two second structure what i want to do is i want to join these two second structure if i want to join these two second structure what i can do is i can take a short chain of amino acid a short chain means 3 4 amino acid are there and via this short chain i can link these two second structure if i join two second structure via a short chain of amino acid via a short chain of amino acid this short chain of amino acid is referred as turn and bind is referred as turn and bind so what is turn and bind is a short chain of amino acid which joins two secondary structures it join two secondary structure is called as the turn and bend when it comes to the when it comes to turn and bend we understood the concept is very easy that we want to join two secondary structure and we are using a short chain that will be referred as turn and bend now the question they ask is which amino acid are commonly found in turn and bend or which amino acid are going to make the turn and bend the answer is going to be proline and glycine so let's write down this point is turn and bend are commonly made up of proline and glycine turn and bend are commonly made up of the amino acid that is going to be there is proline and glycine these are the amino acid that we are going to see in the in the turn and bend now when it comes to the loop when it comes to the loop let's say uh, to want to make you understand the loop what i am saying is again i am taking the same example same example means i am taking the hemoglobin molecule we know that the protein part of hemoglobin is found in the secondary helix uh, secondary structure alpha helix form so let's say this is the alpha helix i am taking one more hemoglobin molecule the secondary structure the alpha helix form let's say this one now i want to join it in turn and bend what i did is i have taken a short chain by which we have joined these two secondary structure this time when i want to join the, uh, these two secondary structure what i do is instead of taking a short chain i take a long chain of amino acid if i take a long chain of amino acid by which we are joining these two secondary structure this long chain is referred as loop so turn and bend and loop are very similar it is only the size which is different turn and bend it is a short chain and loop is going to be a large chain so i can say l4 loop or i can say l4 the larger version of turn and bend so let's write down this point that what is loop is is the larger version of turn and bend larger version of turn and bend that is referred as loop so we have discussed all the four uh, types of secondary structure if i just uh, briefly revise the first that we have discussed was the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet the most common uh, uh, structure secondary structure that you are going to find in the body is the alpha helix right because the stable structure that is more common that is uh, more common that is more stable and the examples are the globin part of the hemoglobin and the myoglobin the beta pleated sheet that is less stable there is interchain linkage and the example is the carbonic anhydrase when it comes to turn band and loop they are basically the joining units if it is small it is turn and band if it is long it is called as loop right so these are the secondary structures we have now before going to tertiary structure i want to add one more uh, definition here before going to tertiary structure i want to add one more definition here and the definition is of super secondary structure something called as super secondary structure super secondary structure let's understand what a super secondary structure is so to understand the super secondary structure what i can say is if you have let's say a protein which is in the alpha helix form if i make a protein which is in the alpha helix form there is one more protein which is also in the alpha helix form so basically i have taken two secondary structure from the protein and i want to join these two secondary structure so either i can use turn and bend or i can use the loop 
so for example if i use uh, for example uh, i am using let's say turn and bend means a short chain of amino acid by which we are joining these two secondary structures now this entire unit which you have made this is the secondary structure this is the secondary structure this entire unit by joining these two secondary structure this entire unit which we have made this entire unit is referred as the super secondary structure this entire unit which we have made so by the by joining these two secondary structure the entire structure that we have made this entire structure where there are two secondary structure joined by either turn band or loop this entire structure is referred as super secondary structure super secondary structure this super secondary structure is also called as motif it is also called as motifs so what are the examples of motifs that we should know the example of motif that we should know is something called as zinc finger zinc finger is an example of motif is an example of motif so what is super secondary structure when two secondary structure joins via either turn and bend or loop when uh, two secondary structure they will join via either turn band or loop that complete unit is referred as the super secondary structure also also called as motif the example of one of the motif is the zinc finger now once we are clear with this let's go to the tertiary structure let's see the details of the tertiary structure now tertiary structure is very easy to understand in a way that if i what i do is i take a polypeptide chain and what i do is i convert that into a complete 3d model the 3d conformation the entire 3d conformation of any polypeptide chain is referred as tertiary structure so basically it's a 3d model is a 3d model of a polypeptide chain is going to be referred as the tertiary structure so let's write down what is tertiary structure is is the entire three dimensional conformation of a polypeptide chain so basically it is a 3d model is a 3d structure that is called as the tertiary structure now coming to the quaternary structure what is the quaternary structure is when we talk about the quaternary structure what happens is in the quaternary structure there should be more than one polypeptide band more than one polypeptide chain has to be there so for example let's say this is one polypeptide chain this is one more polypeptide chain this is one more polypeptide chain so basically there should be more than one polypeptide chain has to be there and these polypeptide chain will be joined via will be joined via a non covalent bond these uh, these polypeptide chains are going to be joined via non covalent bond if we join via join them via a non covalent bond and then it is converting into a functional protein then it is converting into a functional protein that is referred as quaternary structure so in quaternary structure there has to be more than one chain this is the first point second how they are how we are going to link them is via the non covalent bond and once you link them they will convert into a functional protein right so that is called as the quaternary structure so what is quaternary structure is more than one polypeptide chain more than one polypeptide chain joins via non covalent bond to make a functional protein to make a functional protein that is called as the quaternary structure that is called as quaternary structure so we have uh, if i want to summarize all these three uh, all these four categories that we have discussed the primary structure the secondary the tertiary and quaternary uh, let's write down the the important parts uh, or the important points out of them we have written that the protein can be found in the primary structure what is the important point to be remembered is primary structure is the strongest structure because it has the only strong bond that is the peptide bond so you can see only having the peptide bond then is the secondary structure in the secondary structure we have discussed about the alpha helix the beta pleated sheet the turn band then we have discussed about the loop then before going to the tertiary structure we have discussed about something called as the super secondary structure which is also called as motif then we have discussed about the tertiary structure that is basically a 3d conformation then we have discussed about the quaternary structure means there will be more than one chain and the relation that is going to be there is the non covalent bond in the in the tertiary structure 
we can add a point here is that in the tertiary structure we we find a molecule that is called as domain so i can say domain is seen in tertiary structure domain is seen in tertiary structure i will i, I will understand i will make you understand what is domain is so just keep in mind that domain is a, a molecule or i can say a structure which is found in the tertiary form of the protein now what is domain is what is domain is see for example let's say this is a protein every protein will have their own function so for example let's say this particular protein is able to do a function x it will do a function x now what i do is i take a segment of this protein i take a segment of the protein and that segment of the protein which i have taken out this particular segment is able to perform is able to perform the same function the same physical or the chemical function that was performed by the protein then this segment of protein will be referred as domain that is called as domain so what is domain is basically it's a segment of protein which is able to do the same physical and chemical task that is to be done by that particular protein so let's write down this definition that what is domain is domain is segment of protein which is able to to perform same chemical and physical task same chemical and physical task as protein means whatever task that protein is able to do that uh, the same task is uh, this domain can also do that is called as domain what is the thing that you need to remember the example of domain is something called as rosman fold rosman fold is a example of domain where this rosman fold is found this rosman fold is found in the enzymes of oxido reductase category oxido reductase category what is oxido reductase category see the enzymes are divided into six category that we have discussed in a separate video where we have discussed about the different types of protein uh, different types of enzyme in that the first category that we have discussed is the oxido reductase category of the enzymes in those oxido reductase categories of the enzymes we have the rosman fold which is the example of domain so i just want to write one example here of oxido reductase category enzyme that is lactate dehydrogenase lactate dehydrogenase so lactate dehydrogenase contains rosman fold and which is an example of domain right so now we are clear with the super second structure we are clear with the domain the quaternary structure that is going to be more than one chain but the the bond that is going to be there in between is the non covalent bond so these are the points to be taken care of when we when it comes to the the classification of protein that is based on the structure now we are going to see the third type of classification of protein that is based on the composition of protein based on the composition of the protein see when we want to divide the categories we can easily say that there can be two types of protein one is called as the uh, we can say the unconjugated proteins unconjugated protein means contains only amino acid contains only amino acid or i can say contains only only protein part there is nothing apart from the amino acid if there is a chain of amino acid there is only there is chain of amino acid there is nothing else apart from that that is called as the unconjugated protein or a simple protein whereas something then then they say something called as the conjugated protein now what is conjugated protein it is very easy to understand that there is going to be a protein part that is going to be added with a non protein part if you add anything extra apart from the protein that will be referred as the conjugated protein so in unconjugated it is only the protein part that is going to be there in the uh, unconjugated one and in the conjugated one you will have the protein part as well as the non protein part so when it comes to the example when it comes to the example of the unconjugated or a simple protein the example of unconjugated one is the albumin albumin when it comes to the conjugated protein the examples are say for example glycoprotein glycoprotein 
Now, what is the meaning of glycoprotein? Glycoprotein means there is going to be protein. Along with that, there is going to be glycopa. Glyco means the carbohydrate. And the particular carbohydrate that we are talking about here is the oligosaccharides. Oligosaccharides. So, if you take oligosaccharides type of carbohydrate, you add with the protein, the example that you are going to get is called as glycoprotein. So, they ask that which proteins are found in the glycoprotein form. Right? What are the examples of glycoprotein we have? The examples of glycoprotein that we have is blood group antigen. Blood group antigen. Blood group antigen, uh, that is the A antigen or the B antigen, they, what is the structure of them? They are the glycoproteins. They are the glycoproteins. One more example I can add is immunoglobulin. Immunoglobulin, that is the antibody, that is also a glycoprotein. So, that these are the examples of the conjugated protein. Uh, the first uh, example that we have discussed is the glycoprotein. Let's add one more example. That is called as lipoprotein. Now, this time the word itself is very clear. So, we can say there is going to be protein and the known protein part that is going to be there will be a lipid. That is going to be a lipid. So, that will be called as lipoprotein. So, what are the various lipoprotein that we know is the high density lipoprotein, HDL, the LDL, the VLDL. They are the uh, they are the example of the lipoproteins. Then we can add one more example of the conjugated protein that is called as nucleoprotein. Nucleoprotein. Now what is nucleoprotein is obviously there is going to be the protein part, and along with that, if you add the nucleic acid, nucleic acid means DNA or the RNA. But we primarily talk about the DNA. So, if you take the protein along with that, if you add the DNA, that is called as nucleoprotein. The protein that we are talking about here is, is the histone. So, if you take the histone molecule, you add with the DNA, that entire unit is called as the nucleoprotein. That entire unit is called as the nucleoprotein. So, what is nucleoprotein is basically histone with the DNA. Histone with the DNA. What is lipoprotein is the lipid with the protein. What is glycoprotein is the protein with the uh, oligosaccharides. Right? So, these are the examples of the conjugated protein. So, this is the second, uh, this is the third type of classification that we have discussed that is based on the, uh, the composition we can say is the conjugated or the unconjugated type. Now, the last type of classification of protein that we can do is based on the shape of the protein. Based on shape of protein. Now, when we classify the protein based on the shape, I can say there are two types. There are two types. One is the fibrous protein, fibrous protein and the second is the globular protein. Fibrous means there are going to be fibrous, globular means there are going to be the spherical molecules are going to be there. So fibrous, the shape is elongated fiber like shape. They are going to have elongated fiber shape whereas globular they are going to have a spherical shape. Spherical shape. Spherical shape. So, the fibrous molecules and the spherical molecules. So, there are two types of protein based on the, uh, based on the shape. Now, what is the use of knowing this concept? See, the fibers are used because fibers are uh, water insoluble whereas spherical molecules are water soluble. So, I can say the fibers are water insoluble proteins. Once I am saying that they are water insoluble, so we can make various body structures from them. So, they are basically the, they are basically the structural proteins. They are the structures, prote structural proteins. We are going to make the various structures from these fibrous proteins. Whereas the globulars, they are water soluble. They are water soluble. So, basically they are going to do all the dynamic functions means they will move from one place to another in the body very easily and will do the dynamic functions. So, I can say they have the dynamic functions. Uh, they will do the dynamic functions. When it comes to the example, the fibrous protein example is collagen, elastin, fibrillin. These are the example of the fibrous protein. When it comes to the example of the Globular shape protein, let's just say for example albumin. Albumin is a spherical protein, it's a globular protein. So, based on shape, we can say that protein can be divided into two categories. One is the fibrous, and another is the globular protein. 
the fibrous is going to be the having a elongated fiber like shape that is going to be the most of the structure of the body right say for example the, the collagen the elastin and the fibrinin and when it comes to the globular shape protein it is going to have a spherical shape they can easily move in the body because they are water soluble so they will do the dynamic functions and they well, the example of them is the albumin the example of them is albumin so these are the points to be remembered when we discuss the basic classification of the protein what is protein and what are the various uh, types of protein that we have right thank you guys